Hi there, this is Lee Thurburn and you are on live stream Lee. And today, actually I'm already sharing my screen. <laughs> today we're going to be uh, working on a, um, a bubble no code app for a shopping cart. Yesterday we went through the process of creating a product list and um, giving you know the ability or creating the ability to add products to the list, to edit products on the list, and to see products uh, in detail when you click on an item in the list. And that's where we had stopped. So we're going to go ahead and continue the process of building out this app. Um, before I go any farther, I do want to mention a couple of people that support my um, support my live stream and uh, just share their information with you. First is a guy named Dan Nelson. Dan is a genealogist and he is a master storyteller. I, I got to tell you, Dan puts out a newsletter twice or every two weeks, not quite twice or well, twice a month, every two weeks. And um, it is one of the most interesting newsletters I get. I get quite a few and I love Dan's newsletter because they're always filled with interesting tidbits of historical fact, trivia. And it's just fun to read. And if you enjoy that kind of stuff, if you enjoy trivia that, you know, about our history that um, you don't normally run across or absolutely would not come across anywhere else, um, you would want to sign up for this. So go to livestreamlee.com and click on the link for Dan Nelson. And, um, Get, um, you know, get set up on his newsletter. It's real easy. And if you decide you want to unsubscribe, just unsubscribe. Dan has one of the most interesting newsletters um, around for sure. Another guy I want to introduce to you is Bob Hampton. Bob is a um, financial advisor that specializes in um, helping business owners sell their businesses and maximize the amount of money that they get from the sale of their business. Now, there's a lot of financial advisors out there, but very few of them have a combination of a CPA certificate and uh, an area of specialization in helping business owners position and, and contract or construct the the sale of their business so that they maximize their take home and minimize the amount of tax that gets paid to the government on that transaction event. If you're even remotely considering selling your business, go to livestreamly.com and click on the Dan Nell, excuse me, the, the Bob Hampton link and uh, go learn a little bit about Bob. And if you feel so inclined, give him a call and just have a chat with him. He'd love to hear from you. And he is not only a, a smart guy, but he's a fun guy to know. Um, so Bob Hampton, if you're thinking about selling your business or if you just want somebody that really, really is good at helping you to maximize your wealth, Bob Hampton is the guy. And last but not least is another Bob named Bob Hurt. Bob Hurt is a corporate clothier. He helps people get swag with logos and things like that imprinted on a variety of different, you know, kinds of shirts, polo shirts and t-shirts and dress shirts and all that kind of stuff. Bob's been in the business for more than 50 years and I've used Bob. He's helped me get some beautiful shirts and, uh, you know, Bob is a great guy uh, and he is an expert that knows his industry and will make sure that you get the best combination of price, quality, and um, the basically the overall look, whatever fits your budget and will make your company look good. So uh, livestreamlee.com, click on the Bob Hurt button and uh, get yourself some corporate swag. So um, now let's go ahead and jump in to the, let me get rid of Bob, jump in to the, um, to the uh, bubble uh, tool and let's get started with uh with bubble okay so what we're looking at here is a page where i have a um i have a, a, a list of products and the ability to add products to the list and i want to show you some a cool feature about bubble up here notice that there's um, a flag that says i have two issues well i'm going to click on this and you're going to see that 
um, over here is some issues that need to be fixed. And so if I click on one, it's actually going to show me that I have on this page a, um, a something set up that is conditional. So I'm on the page, um, SC My Products, and I have a when page load in um, the entire page load is yes, I have an ID attribute here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to delete this because I'm actually don't need that. I'm going to show you that got rid of both issues. Bubble has a that that really cool feature that shows you if you have issues with how you've set the page up. So I'm going to show you the page real quick just to remind you where we're at. So this is a page with products on it. And you'll see I've got three or four different products on this page. Looks like four products. And um, this is where we stopped, basically where we stopped yesterday. So first of all, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add the ability to search this list of products. And um, then I want to give you the ability to add a product to a shopping cart. And we're going to do that both from this page and from a product page. So if I click on chocolate chip cookies, for example, you can see the product page and I have an add to cart button. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to make both of this add to cart button and um, I'll click the back button here and I'm going to add a link right here with a cart. And so we're going to be able to add items to the cart. So first, let's go in and add the search functionality. When you have a large list of things, you want to be able to search for things. And so this is an important function. So what I want to do is I, I like to put things in groups. So we're just going to create a group into where into which we're going to put um, various things. So here's my group. And the first thing I want to do with the group is name it. So we're going to call this group search products. OK, and that's it. Now, uh, the type of content, we're just going to go ahead and select products and um, that's what is this group is related to. Now, I also want to, so that it's easy to see this group uh, box, I'm going to remove the style and I'm going to put a border, a single, bo a solid border, one pixel, and I'm just going to make it nice and dark and easy to see. And so now if I click off of it, you can see the border. That's just make it, makes it easy for me to work with it. Now, I'm going to put a couple of things in there. First, I'm going to put an input inside the border for search. So we'll just move that about there. And we're going to change this to find a product dot dot dot. So find a product. And that's what this is. There's no initial content there. Now we're going to put a couple of buttons. We're going to put a button for find and a button for reset. So this button is going to be find now. Okay, so it's too much uh, space. Let's just make it find because I don't want the button to be real wide. Now I'm going to also add a button that's going to say reset. And this will become obvious why in a moment. So we'll have a button that says reset. Now, um, this... Um, this repeating group down here below, if I double click on it, you're going to see it says search for products. And um, it's the repeating group is it's uh, the type of content is products. We search for products to fill the group and we put all products in the group. So I just want to call your attention to that. That's how the repeating group is set up by default. So what we're going to do now is we're going to click on find double click on find and we're going to click on workflow and we're going to do something with find. We're going to um, show the element repeating group display a list. Okay, so now we have repeating group products. Data source is going to be do a search for products just like on the repeating group, but we're going to add a constraint. The constraint is going to be any field. Now, you could do the search on specific fields. Okay, so if you just want to search for the product name or if you just want to search the price or the description, you could search any specific field in the products field or in the products table. 
So basically the, the content is what table are we pulling data from? And these are field names within the table products. So I don't want to do name or description. I want to do any field. Well, if I'm doing a text search, it's not going to search price and I can't really search product image, but I'm going to come down here and do any field, which will find text that is either in the, um, the product name or the product description. So any field that contains, now I'm going to tell it what I'm looking for a match. I'm going to come down for my input, find a product. Okay, so this is the one I just created, input, find a product. And we're going to do relative to the product's value. So now if you get a blue piece of text here, that tells you, of course, that you've got a valid expression. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and close this. And um, now what I'm going to do is we're just going to go ahead and um, leave that. We're going to come back up here to um, design. And now I'm going to do preview. And you'll see that we now have, once this loads, we have find a product. We have the find button and a reset button. So if I click in here and I type lemon and then I click find, it does a search and it comes up with lemon. Well, lemon is obviously right here, but let's look in here and see why uh, where we get lemon. So I'm going to click on this and we're going to come over here to the detail with each box of tangy lemon. See, it found the word lemon in the description. Okay, with each box of tangy lemon. So it found lemon in the description and that's why it's showing that. Now, when I hit the back button, I just went back and I basically did a reset. But if I type lemon again and then I do find, now what if I wanted to find chocolate? Well, I can actually type chocolate and I can click find and it'll find chocolate chip cookies, but um, I couldn't see it. I couldn't see what I was looking for until I typed it. So what we need is a way to reset the um, reset, the you know, the process here, but showing the find button kind of confuses you because I've already typed chocolate. I'm still finding. So what I want to do is I'm just going to create my process a little bit different. Now you can do all, all kinds of things, but I just kind of like the natural intuitiveness of what I'm about to do. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come back over here and I'm going to, I've got the find button highlighted. I'm going to click on start flow or uh, workflow and I'm going to go in and I'm going to add another action after the search. I'm going to go to element actions and I'm going to hide the element um, button find. So it's the button that says find. So I'm hiding that button. So now let's see what happens. We're going to come over here and we're going to refresh this page. And uh, now we're going to do a search for lemon. And I'm going to click find and looky there, the, the find button disappears and I've got a reset button. Well, I don't yet have reset. I, I can't click on it yet and do anything because we haven't put any, any uh, functionality, any workflow behind that. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to come back over to the design. I'm going to click reset and I'm going to add a workflow to the reset button. So here's the reset button. So what I'm going to do with the workflow on the reset button is I'm going to do navigation, refresh the page, and um, we'll now go ahead and click over here. We'll see what this does. So if I click find product and I do lemon and I do find, I get lemon. And if I say, okay, well, that's great, but that's not really, I want to click reset. It reloads the paid page, and now I can um, find something like chocolate. And I click find, and now I've got chocolate. So this is this is just a, a really kind of a, a nice, clean way to um, you know to set up a search process so that you can uh, find what you're looking for. Now. 
I'm going to go ahead and do one additional thing. So we're going to come back over here to the design and we're going to copy this, um, this icon. I'm going to use the control C as in cat and the control V as in Victor. And we've copied it. Now we're going to choose a different icon. I'm going to type cart and I'm going to get a little plus button for add to cart. And now we've got a cart button showing. And what I want to do is I want to create an action behind this. So I'm going to double, double click on this and I'm going to click start workflow. And so now I've got a icon um, cart plus and I'm going to do a navigation. I'm going to navigate to go to a page. I'm going to choose my page destination. And um, you know what? I don't have a, I have a, a, a cart. So this is, there we go. This is where we're going to take us. We're going to take it to the cart page. Okay. Now, what do I want to send? I want to send the current sales products to the cart page. Okay. So we're going to transfer some data. When we click that, we're going to transfer the, the data related to that current sales product to the cart page. Okay, so now I'm going to go ahead and click here and I'm going to refresh the page. And um, now you're going to see the uh, cart buttons are going to show up. And now when I click the cart button for this chocolate, it's going to take me to the cart page. And here on the cart page, I have a form, but we haven't done anything. You can tell I have a form because I've got a, uh, I say a form, I've got a, a repeating field, um, a repeating group, um, but there's nothing in it. So the next what thing that we have to do is we have to put something in there. Now, I'm also going to uh, come over here. Well, first, let's just do this one thing at a time. Okay, so now I'm going to go to... Um, choose my page, cart page. And um, now we're going to go to design and we're going to see what we've got here. So here on this page, we've got a big repeating group. And if I, um, if I click on this and I look at what we've got in this repeating group, we've got products. Data source is going to be current page products. Okay. So this is going to um, actually here, data source, um, Repeating group products. There we go. Uh, list of products. Repeating group. We may have to play around with this. I'm not 100%. Repeating group products. Um, list of products. Okay. So let's see. Oh, we got an issue. Let's see what this is. Repeating group products. Data source cannot refer to the same element. Okay. So we're just referring to the same element. Okay. So that actually doesn't work. So, um, Let's not worry about that right now. Um, let's not worry about the data source. Okay, so what is this? Oh, you know what this is? That's products. That's actually not what I want. I want this to be um, an order. And um, so this needs to be an order. So this is a um, order. Dynamic data and text box must be printable as text, but is in this case, okay, so uh, current sales orders, okay, current sales order. Let's see here if we can just get current sales orders. Um, okay, I'm not sure what I'm going to try. I'm going to do there. So let's just delete that. Now, Let's try moving data into here. Um, I'm going to have to play around with this just a little bit to see exactly what the right sequence is. And um, I might need to actually have another table for order items. I think I'm going to need order items. Yes, that's actually what I'm going to need. I'm going to need order items. So let's go over here and let's look at our data. Okay, so I've got, let's think about how this is going to basically how this is going to need to be constructed. So I've got products. Okay. So products is a set of set of data that um, vendors create and customers purchase. 
when customers purchase products, they add them to an order. So that means that they become an order item. So the products are going to need to be attached to an order and the um, and they're going to need to become an order item and attached to an order. So if we come over here and we look at orders, we have products. There's a list of products that are in an order. Okay, so we have products in an order, but if we come over here to products, so this is type order. So right, I'm, I'm in the orders group and we see products listed. But if I look at products, I don't see orders. So I need to add a field for products for orders. And um, since products go into one, um, one order, let's see, this is going to be um, products go into orders. And um, it's a one to basically it's a one to one relationship when you're an order will have a list of products. I think it's a one to one relationship. Let's just let's just play with this and see how this um, how this plays out. OK, so now um, let's go with order items. Let's create a, a group called order items. OK, and order items are going to include products. Oops, I got to put field type. So they're going to have order items are going to be related to products. And order items are going to be related to orders. OK, orders. So order items will relate to one order. So there won't be multiple orders in an order item list. So that won't be a list. OK. Um, and then an order item and a product are a one to one relationship. OK. And so we have order. We'll have an order name and then we'll have products um, and an order item. And an, OK. So I think we've got this set up correctly. Let's go in and um, just kind of do a test run at how we have this set up. And now we're going to come back over to our design. And um, this is actually an order. Actually, this is going to be a list of order items. There we go. Order items, data source, current page products. Now, the data source will be get data, repeating group order items. Arbitrary. Okay, we're going to leave that blank. Okay, so current users, current users, orders, products, product image, current users, orders, products, product name. And let's go with current users, orders, products, product should be price. Okay, so now let's see if we add something to the order, if it, <coughs> if it transfers through correctly. Okay, so now... Let's go back and let's or let's add this chocolate chip cookie to the cart. And we don't have anything showing up, so we don't have the correct flow of information coming through yet. All right. I am basically out of time. So what I need to do is I need to basically de debug this process so that I can show you. But. I can tell you that from a flow perspective, let me just come over here. I'm going to go to, um, I'm going to just come down here to the bottom. And um, from a flow perspective, what we have to do is we have to take, we have to create. Okay, so we pick, pick um, products, products for purchase. Okay, and then we move them into, I'll just kind of stack it down here like this, um, order, they become order items. 
And then the order items are added to an order. And then the order goes through the checkout. Okay, so basically we've, we've got the products and the pick product price process. We now have to move them into an order, but they have to pass through the process of becoming items in an order. So we have to move them into this um, process here before we can check out. And that's what uh, we'll do tomorrow um, on Monday over the weekend. I will uh, make sure I've got all of this streamlined so that I can show you exactly how to do it. And then uh, we'll, uh, we'll just pursue the process on Monday of finishing uh, to build the uh, cart process. I hope that you found this uh, helpful <laughs> and um, um, I look forward to seeing you back on Monday. In the meantime, uh, go play with Bubble. Uh, you're going to find it to be a lot of fun and uh, also a great mental puzzle. There's lots of videos out there and uh, you can certainly find lots of people that have done exactly what I'm doing. And um, I will tell you candidly, part of the process of me doing what I'm doing is because it, it uh, forces me to fully understand. Um, I'm a professor at UT Arlington and I teach entrepreneurship and I teach business strategy. One thing I've learned is when you teach people how to do something, it forces you to really learn it in detail yourself. So part of my education on how to use Bubble to do some of the cool things that it can do is making sure that I can explain it to you, which cements the knowledge in my understanding. And so um, that's why I'm doing what I'm doing. So hopefully you're getting some value out of it. And I'll look forward to seeing you back here on Monday at three o'clock for another episode. And uh, we'll just move the process forward in 30 minute increments. Thanks. Have a wonderful weekend and we'll see you on Monday. Cheers.